Hey everyone, uh, this is me, the other Viking. I'm here to talk to you about Pocket Rails. Pocket Rails is designed by Mike Elliott, a fellow that I know, and is going to be published by a fellow that I know as well by the name of Sean Brown. Um, Pocket Rails is a card drafting game for two to four players. Um, each person is going to get a portfolio of different companies and different goods that is going to be located in front of them. And is also when you draft cards to your own portfolio, you're going to draft cards to the center of the table called the rail yard. Um, the rail yard will then grow because everybody's going to have input into it. And depending upon what's in the rail yard, it'll determine how valuable your portfolio is. However, um, just like any good stocks and dividends type game, uh, if you over uh, invest in something, it could actually end up costing you the game. It could cost you points. And also you have an insider trading card that is secret to you and you only, and that is revealed at the end of the game. And that will also switch up the scoring a little bit and you gotta be pay attention to your secret invested investment insider card uh, to make sure that you don't end up at the end of the game with some negative points. But anyway, um, the game's pretty simple. To teach how to play, to figure out how to win is another story. But I'll talk about that in my final thoughts. Right now, let me show you how Pocket Rails is played. All right, so this is Pocket Rails. It comes in this cool little tuck box here. The top of the tuck box actually comes off. This is gonna be your first player marker. It looks like a little box car. Isn't that kind of neat? I'll talk about the first player and why that matters. Basically, the first player gets to make kind of a cool decision, possibly after each round or after each action, but I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, the cards themselves, they come in these multiple different colors and all these different information. They have a city on them. They'll have a company on them and they'll have a good on them when I give you a little bit of a closer look since I've uh, taken these five cards out. You can see that the companies come in the color of the card and also the logo that's on them. So if you have any colorblind folks, they can just go by the logo that's in the middle instead of the actual color. And then on each corner there is a type of good. Um, so there's cattle and coal, lumber, cotton, and steel. And then there's also a city. There's three cities, Denver, Chicago, and New York. You can see I have three Chicago's in here, but that's just because, well, there's only three cities in the game. Um, those things are important because they're all going to play into the fact that you are going to have a hand of cards you're going to keep in front of you. And then there is going to be a growing pile of cards that is in the middle that is going to determine how well you as an investor does as the game progresses. Um, beginning of the game, each person is going to get one card, and this card is secret. And so this is my card, and this is New York, and it is coal. Now these are two important things. This is going to be kept face down in front of me. Nobody else can see that. You don't want people to see that because they don't want you to kind of jam you. Um, at the end of the game, uh, you do not want there to be a lot of... Uh, the, this color of card uh, in the middle of the board. Uh, you do want a bunch of coal, however. Um, this is going to be bad. The color and the, and the company is going to be bad. It's going to detract points from you, but lots and lots of coal in the middle of the board is going to get you lots and lots of points. So, And you can peek at this card at any time during the game, but just make sure your friends uh, that you're playing against have no idea that this is it. Now they might be able to guess just by your actions and what you're doing. They can maybe have an inclination, uh, but you know that can happen. Now you know we, since you're playing with up to four people, it's very possible that somebody could have the exact same information as you are. This isn't the only New York coal card that's in the game, um, so you might want to just you might be actually working with somebody to have a really good uh, middle of the board. All right, so let's go ahead and take this insider card, our insider knowledge card, put it off to the side here. We're not going to be looking at that. We're going to actually just show you how the game is played. This is a card drafting game. Um, in a four-player game, every person gets six cards. In a two- or three-player game, each person's going to get eight cards. I'm just going to pretend I'm playing a, uh, a, a four-player game. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so if you've ever played a drafting game, you know I'm going to have to take a look at these cards. And I'm going to have to take one of them, and I'm going to have to put it in my personal profile here. Um, your profile cards are going to help you score the points of the stuff in the middle. So you're going to want to try to um, replicate what's going on in the middle, but you also don't want to just go all in high hog on anything, and I'll explain why in just a little bit. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these things. So remember, having 
my, I don't want blue. I don't want this, because remember that matches up with B and O. I don't want to see a B and O card in the middle. So um, try to keep, try to avoid having those things match up. But I'm guessing since I'm gonna draft two of these cards right now to put one in the middle and one in front of me, I'm gonna turn the rest off the middle. But what I do want is, um, you know, if I have uh, a coal, that's gonna be worth something. So let's go ahead, we're gonna take that one because that's my only coal card. We put that one in front of us and then we're gonna have to put a card into the middle. Now I'll explain this is gonna seem a little confusing right now, but you know, let's just say, let's just take this Chicago card. Actually, you know, yeah, let's take the Chicago card. We'll put it in the middle and then we're gonna take these cards and we're gonna hand them to the left. Now in the second round of the game, you're gonna hand it to the right and then in the third and final round of the game, you'll hand it off to the left, but just to keep that in mind. Now everybody else is gonna do the exact same thing. And at the end of each round, uh, what happens is, or each round, each turn that you take, you are going to, each person has to flip over the card that they have in front of them, and every card that puts, gets put in the middle gets flipped over as well. So let's just take, um, like, and this is after every turn, right? And you're gonna do this until you don't have any more cards. So let's just say this one and that one were put into the center. And then you're going to take those cards in, in the middle and you're gonna separate them. And you're gonna do the same thing with your own cards uh, that, that you have you know, as you're going, so let's just go ahead and take a couple of random cards like so, and we'll place them like that. So like these are the cards that I have um, after that because we're taking one card, putting it in the middle, put one there. We only have six. You're only going to do that three times. And so that's what we have. Now the reason you do this is because you can enter into a situation where either you or your opponents or the middle is over invested. Now, obviously, there'd be more than these cards in the middle because there are three other players. So let's just go ahead. Each of those would be putting three cards. Now, so let's just randomly uh, take three. So we got one of those, and we got one of those, and there, and there, and there, and then we'll finally go there, and there, and there. So you can see we have a lot of different things in the middle from cards that people have discarded. Now, how does some, how does either the rail yard here in the middle get over invested or how does a player get over invested? These are the two things you have to watch for because when you over invest anything, those cards get taken and put into the discard pile. If any player um, has three cards of the same city name and they have the same company color in the portfolio, those are considered to be over-invested. Now, I don't have, I don't have the same city. I actually have two New Yorks and I have one Denver, but I'm not gonna run into that problem because of the fact that they're the two different colors. Now, however, if, and I just kind of set these aside to kind of show this off, if for some reason I ended up with these three cards in my hand, three Chicago cards, and all three of these are gray or the uh, GMNO company, I would have to take these cards. If these were in my uh, portfolio, I'd have to take these cards and I have to discard them. Now, you might be saying, how would that ever happen? Well, smart players who are handing cards off to their neighbors, since these are public knowledge after you turn them over, they can look over at your cards and they can look and possibly have cards that are going to be like, oh, it's the last round, you have to draft this type of card or maybe perhaps give you a, bad, a tough decision you have to make and force yourself into that. It can happen. And also, if you don't really kind of pay attention to what's going on and take care of your portfolio and diversify, that can happen as well. Now, how does the rail yard work? So if the rail yard has a situation where if any company, a color, has one of each city, those are considered um, to be over-invested and discarded. So here we have Chicago, Denver, Chicago. So that hasn't happened for blue yet because there's no New York there. But we have New York, Chicago, and Chicago, and Chicago in green. So that hasn't happened either. And neither of the other companies have three cards. But let's say if we had um, this Chicago, Denver, Chicago, and then add this New York to the BNO. And let's just add like another New York to the BNO like that. Now we have a situation where three cards have to be discarded. There has to be a New York card discarded, there has to be a Chicago card discarded, and there has to be a Denver card discarded. So the Denver card has to go, it's gone. But we have two Chicago's and two New York's left over. Now let's say I have the first player marker right here. And remember, my secret 
first thing is I need I want coal to exist at the end of the game. So that's worth extra points. So I don't want to get rid of this Chicago card because it has the coal. So I'm going to take this and I'll discard that. And then if there is um, one of these two New Yorks, maybe I can look over. I've got an inkling of what maybe somebody's going after lumber. I can take that and I'll get rid of that. And now I, those go back. We reset uh, the rail yard in the middle and we're ready to go for the next round. Now, since I made a decision and I had this, um, I had the box car, this is gonna go to the next player on the left. So it isn't just one person making that decision over and over again. Now you don't score at the end of round one, but you do score at the end of round two. Now at the end of round two, I would have three more cards in front of me. So I'm just gonna take three off the top just to kind of show this and how this works. Let's see, I have that red and then Give one more, another red. All right, so those are the those are my six now total cards uh, that I've collected that are in my portfolio. Now to do the scoring at the end of round two, first thing we're going to do is we are going to take the number of uh, company cards you have and take that times the number that I have. So for yellow, there's two in here and two in there. I'd score four. I have one gray, one gray. That's one. I have two red, one red that's two, and I have one blue and two blue, that's another two. Now, whoever, somebody's got a bunch of green um, in, their, in, their, in their hand or in their portfolio, they're gonna kind of clean up in that situation. Now, this card, your insider training card, does not affect the scoring in round two, so don't worry about that. It's only gonna affect the scoring in round three. So you, uh, even though the, the B&O uh, company is going to kind of um, be harmful for me to have at the end, of the uh, of round three, at the end of round two, I can have a ton of blue cards and score a bunch of points using that right now. I just have to figure out a way to get them out of my hand. Remember how like if you overinvest, you get you gotta get to get rid of stuff. That's something you can do. That's a, that's a strategy that you should do if you want to try to win. Now to score the goods, we have to actually um, figure out how many of each good are available. Now in this situation, it might be tough for you to tell, right? That, well, I'm just glancing at it, but I've already totaled it up. We have three steel. Uh, we have a steel here, steel here, steel here. We have three coal. We have a coal here. We have a coal here, and we have a coal here. But we only have one cotton, and it looks like one cattle, and we have two lumber. Now we don't get to score the stuff that has the most of. So anything that we would score for coal or steel isn't going to happen. But we can score for the rest of the items. And then you just take that times the number that we have in here. Now I have a cotton, so I can score my cotton. I have this, I have a lumber. I have actually two lumber, so I can score those. Actually, I'm sorry, I have two cotton and two lumber. So I'm gonna be able to score both of those, but the one steel and the one coal that I have do not get to score at the end of round two. All right, so I'm not gonna go through all of round three again, but you're gonna do the exact same thing again. Each person gets six cards. You pick pick one for your portfolio, pick one for the middle. You reveal them, you do the exact same thing where you, if anything gets over-invested, you remove those cards and you finally get to the end of round three. When you get to the end of the round three, that is when this uh, card comes into play. Hopefully you've gotten rid of all of the cards that are matching to this, uh, um, like these two, you don't want any of the same company because any points, you, you total up the, the number of companies the exact same way where you take the number of com company cards you have times those, but anything that matches up that's your insider, you get you score negative points for those. So it's very possible that if you weren't able to get rid of those and you have a ton of these blues, so like you have a ton of those blue cards in there and that's my negative, all of a sudden, that wipes out the scoring that I have in the end of the third round. However, if I can score, we score goods as normal again, but if I can score, if I actually get to score the coal, those points count as double because that is my insider trading as far as the commodity goes. So you can kind of see, in, in, as the game progresses, um, and it, it's a little tough to like see without actually playing the game, but as the game progresses, you will notice that as your portfolio grows and as you're watching the other people's portfolios grow, you can kind of see what they're going for. You can get a hint if somebody, if I started like just keep putting lots and lots of coal cards down, other players are gonna notice he's got a ton of coal cards. I bet you that's his round three scoring. That's what he wants. I wanna make sure 
that there's a ton of coal cards in the middle of the board. So when it comes time to the final round of the game, there's too many of those and nobody gets to score those because it's that, that particular commodity, there's too much of it. So you kind of walk a fine balance between keeping your investments diversified, but also you don't want to go too heavy into something that's going to let people know exactly what you're doing because the other players, if they're on their toes, are going to actively try to make sure that you don't get those points. This is a game that comes in a small little box, but it has a ton of teeth, a ton of cleverness to it, and also rewards smart play. And that is something that I really, really enjoy about any game I play, and I especially enjoy about something that comes in a box this small. But let me talk about all of that uh, in a little bit more in my final thoughts. All right, so there you go. That is Pocket Rail, so it should have you a good idea of how to play the game. Um, so this one's a little bit difficult as far as, like, when I was teaching the game, I was like, I didn't really feel like maybe, like, grokking how the game is played. It's tough to explain because, as I said in the beginning, figuring out how to score the points so you win the game is more difficult than the actual playing, right? I mean, anybody can just say, okay, draft this card, put the card in the middle, draft this card, put it in the card in the middle, that sort of thing. That's easy to do. Add the layer on top of it, which is make sure I don't overinvest into my own hand yet because you're going to want to overinvest most likely if you're trying to get rid of cards out of your portfolio because you want to avoid losing points because of your insider card. Now I add in the layer of, I want to overinvest some of the stuff that's in the middle to take away points from my opponents, but I also want to make sure that like I'm riding the line, especially with the goods, right? You can't have too many of the good that's going to score your points in the middle of the board because then it won't be worth anything. So you want it to have enough or a lot, but not a lot, if that makes sense. So like you want to be right there, you want to be the penultimate top level one or like just, a, just a hair below the one that has the most. But you, but you shouldn't just focus on the thing that's going to get you double points either, because you can still score lots of points otherwise. But I mean, obviously when the final round comes and you get that big swing of the double points, that's going to help. And also the big swing of the double negative points, that's going to hurt as well. I don't know how many times I played this game with my buddies. Um, and these are all like players that enjoy heavier games, right? But it's one of those things where you would get to the point where it's like, oh, that's going to jam me. And it would happen. And like you would think, oh, if I had only just taken one more coal card or if I had gotten rid of, um, like if I would somehow figured out a way to uh, get rid of that New York card in the middle and stuff like that, it happens. And so what I liked about that is the fact that there's lots of games out there that I really, really enjoy that I'm no good at, but I always feel like I can do better the next time I play because I learn something. Um, you know, heavier Euros, you know, like things like Madeira or Panamax or things like that. I know those are probably older games. You probably don't, if you're watching this in 2023, you maybe you don't recognize the names of those games. But those were games like big, heavier, meteor uh, Euro games that like I really enjoyed the, the process of playing. But I never really, it took me multiple plays to figure out how to actually be good at them. And I like that. It seems like nowadays when I sit down and play a game, because I've played thousands of board games, um, I grok it pretty quickly and I realize, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z and make sure I get lots of, uh, like, you know, W, and then I'm going to win. Huh, <laughs> W, win. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? Like, like you've played so many work replacement games, you can kind of figure out how to, how to navigate the game to score a lot of points to win. You've played enough engine building games that you just get that inherent feeling of what what you're supposed to do to win and you're just kind of like it's kind of like you're just going over the same old treadmill that you've done over and over again now those games are good and 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 they're clever and they're and they and they, they, they present the process of the game well enough that that i will definitely sit down and play stuff like that but it is the rare gem that comes along like this where i'm like oh my gosh that was like fun i had fun playing that but i scored like negative points at the end of the game because I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. I gotta try that again. I gotta do better. And that's what gets games like this to my table. Now, tie in the fact that it has that weight and that meat on it and you get this little tiny cardboard box here and that's the entire game. I mean, this is something, especially since 
like as I'm completely downsizing my board game collection. You know, I used to have thousands of board games and I'm down to less than 500 now and my goal is to get to less than 100 games. Is that, um, you know, having something like this with very, very little shelf space that I can take anywhere I want and I can, uh, you know, have it be challenge each time it hits the table. That's something special. And it's, it's a pretty rare design that does that. So I'm pretty impressed with it. But anyway, there you go. That is Pocket Rails. Please like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. <laughs> like I said, I don't do a lot of these videos anymore, but um, I do them when uh, the game warrants it and when I think that it's something that I, uh, I'm excited about and I want to talk about. So, And that, uh, to a T, fits what Pocket Rails is to me. All right, until next time, take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon.